Brought to you by JMR Rentals, professional digital cinema and broadcast equipment rentals in Brooklyn, New York. JMRNY.com. And now get 15% off your first rental when you use the promo code WEEKEND. Call 347-721-3400 or email info at jmrny.com for details. Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, here with another camera review. Today on the program, we're taking a look back at the Canon 5D. Now, for this episode, we looked at both the Mark III and Mark IV versions of the camera. The video you saw at the top of the show was shot on the Canon 5D Mark IV. If you're a podcast listener, you may want to watch this one as we will be featuring more footage from that camera. To watch the episodes, you can always find them on our website, norestfortheweekendpodcast.com, or on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash getbehindtherabbit. Now, this won't be your traditional review. It's more of a review and retrospective. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the camera, talk about my personal uh, experience with it, and it's what I feel is an important camera, especially to the indie film community. All right, so let's get into this camera, starting with its history. In 2008, Canon kicked off the DSLR revolution with the 5D Mark II. It was the first DSLR that really shot video with a filmic quality. You could make cinematic looking films with one of these little cameras and it was extraordinary. The camera caught the attention of indie filmmakers and Hollywood. It was used for low budget indie projects as well as major film and television productions. For some, it was their crash cam, but for indie filmmakers like Ed Burns, it was their A cam. Burns used the 5D Mark II to film Newlyweds, a feature film that he made for $9,000. That film was selected to close Tribeca Film Festival. Then a group of developers created a hack software called Magic Lantern. It was created for filmmakers to improve the camera's video functions. For more on this, check out Armando Ferreira's YouTube channel. He made a great video about the 5D Mark II and Magic Lantern. In 2012, the 5D was upgraded with the Mark III, which also improved the video features. Then in 2016, Canon updated the camera once again with its most recent version, the Mark IV, which at the time of its release cost $3,500 for the body only. It was capable of shooting 4K video with a 30.4 megapixel sensor and Canon's dual pixel autofocus system. These new video features were a major upgrade to the previous iterations of the camera. But by October of 2018, Canon would move to their full-frame mirrorless system with the EOS R and transition from the EF lens mount to the RF mount. And because Canon was invested wholeheartedly in mirrorless with the R line and the new RF lens collection, their latest DSLRs, the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark III, may be the last DSLRs the company ever makes, and perhaps the last DSLRs ever made. 
So where are we today? In a world of mirrorless and cinema cameras, why even consider a DSLR? According to John Marino of JMR Rentals, the 5D is still one of his most rented cameras. In fact, I can only get the camera for a few days for this review because the cameras are so frequently rented out. It's still that popular. One of the things we try to tackle on the show when it comes to gear is trying to find affordable solutions for you to get out and shoot. That's why we've been looking at some of these older cameras like the 5D, like the C100, because they still produce high quality images and won't cause you to take out a second mortgage. We're talking about these cameras specifically for filmmaking. You're probably not going to use this for client work or videography work, but I think you could definitely use them to make a short or some other kind of passion project. As far as my own personal history with the 5D, I've used it on several projects. Back in 2014, 2015, we used it to make an entire web series. We have also used it uh, for client shoots to make promotional videos. As recently as 2020, I used it uh, to shoot interviews for a short documentary project. But let's break it down. Let's talk about it uh, in terms of what I liked about it and the shortcomings of the camera, starting with form factor. I really like the form factor of the 5D. It's substantial, the grip feels great in the hand, and it seems durable. It has some weight to it, so it's a bit easier to keep steady than smaller mirrorless cameras, despite the fact that it has no image stabilization. I used the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter, which doesn't have IS, and I was able to still get some pretty steady shots with a bit of stabilization added in post. It's also weather sealed, so it'll stand up to all sorts of conditions. The menu system. Like most Canon cameras, the menu system is intuitive and pretty easy to navigate. And it also has a favorites tab to program the functions you use the most. Color science. The colors out of the 5D look really good straight out of camera. It's a very easy to color correct the footage. The Mark IV doesn't come with Canon log unless you order it specifically. So I use the neutral picture profile. At this point, considering the camera's cost, which I'll get into later, I feel like it should come with C-Log. Traditionally, filmmakers have loved this camera for its filmic look, which I feel would be achieved even easier if it had C-Log built in. But it manages to do so pretty well with the neutral picture profile. Autofocus. The dual pixel autofocus was still pretty new when Canon put it into the Mark IV. It's been improved upon since, but it still works pretty well. For the Mark III, I wouldn't recommend using the continuous autofocus. The screen. The screen on the 5D isn't great uh, for both the Mark III and the Mark IV. It doesn't articulate at all, so you have to be behind the camera in order to see it. I would definitely suggest getting an external monitor. Frame rates and resolution. The 5D shoots in 24, 30, and 60 frames per second in full HD. You can also shoot in 120 frames per second, but you're forced to shoot in 720p. I mainly shot in 24 and 60, and I think the footage looks really solid. The 5D Mark IV does have a significant crop factor if you shoot in 4K, so I wouldn't recommend it. So who's this camera for? In 2021, the 5D is sort of a curious case. Professional productions use it as a B and C camera or even a crash cam, but I think you could use it as your main camera depending on what you're shooting. You're not going to impress a client with it these days, but you could certainly use it for a passion project like a short film or a music video. People have film features on the 5D as I mentioned before, but now there's lots of other options for that. So both the Mark III and the Mark IV can be built out. You can use a monitor, a rail system, shoulder rig, follow focus, etc. And all of those could improve the performance. Should you buy a 5D? That's a tough question. According to Canon's website, the 5D Mark IV is currently retailing for $26.99 or $27.99 if you want it with C-Log, which I feel is pretty pricey considering the camera came out in 2016. For that same money, you could get the EOS R with a kit lens and an adapter for your old EF mount glass. If you're not worried about shooting photos, you could easily go with something like the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro for $24.95. You can keep your old EF mount glass because it has an EF mount. That camera has a lot of great video features, including built-in ND, shutter angle, and a ton more options in terms of frame rates and resolutions. It, it's not even a fair comparison at this point. But let's look at the previous iteration of the 5D, the Mark III. You could find that camera used for less than $1,000. That camera plus a few extras to build it out, and you could have a solid little movie camera. If you're more daring, you could also look into things like the Magic Lantern software to open up the realm of new possibilities for video. If you're just starting out, this could definitely be your A-cam 
for your next project. Another option would be to rent the 5D. You can find them at reasonable rates, often in a package with lenses. That would be a better value than the more expensive cameras. I always advise people to rent before you buy. Use the camera on a project. See if it works for you. Also, remember, these are amazing still cameras, and you can use them to shoot things like time-lapse photography and stop-motion animation. When you're shooting video with a DSLR, you're shooting at 1080p, which is around 2K in resolution. That's two megapixels. But when you shoot a photo with something like a 5D, you're getting 30 megapixels. Even if you take the image in JPEG form, you're still getting a ton more resolution. Recently, during the pandemic, I made a film with some stop motion animation. I used my Canon 80D for much of it, and it came out looking great. For more on that project, check out episode 801 of the podcast on how to make a film in isolation. In conclusion, the 5D has become a staple of the industry since the Mark II. It's become the old reliable, the strong camera that doesn't do everything well, but does enough well to get the job done. On a side note, these reviews of older cameras have really made me re-examine the notion of gear doesn't matter, which was a mantra that was spread throughout YouTube on various filmmaking channels. I'm sure you've all heard it. Just to look into this a bit, so take a look back at 2011, the feature film Silent House. That film was made for $2 million and grossed over $16 million worldwide. It was shot on the 5D Mark II. The TV series Wilfred, starring Elijah Wood, aired from 2011 to 2014, and that show was shot on a Canon 7D and a Nikon D800. The question of does gear matter is a complicated one. Someday I may dedicate an entire episode to answering that question, but I think the spirit of gear doesn't matter is saying don't let gear hold you back. If you can get your hands on a camera, you can make a movie. If you know how to shoot, you can work within the limitations of that camera and you can make it look good. And yes, of course, there's certainly instances when gear absolutely matters, but don't let that stop you from creating. So did you find this episode helpful? Would you use the 5D for filmmaking? Tweet at us at BTR Productions or leave us a comment if you're watching this online and let us know. All right, so that's all we got for you today. Thanks so much for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. For more of our content, including more gear and movie reviews, visit our website, norestfortheweekendpodcast.com. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And now you can subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash getbehindtherabbit. I'd like to thank Alia Vilf for being a part of this episode and give a big shout out and a thanks to our sponsor, JMR Rentals. For Behind the Rabbit Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.